und welcome to Das German Critic, weil hey, außer mir macht's ja keiner. Raising children can be very, very difficult, tiresome and more often than not, a pain in the ass. Thankfully, printed and electronic media has provided parents with dozens of pages and hours of material showing them how to keep their little brats in line. And today, we're going to take a look at one of them, written and illustrated in 1845 by doctor and psychiatrist Heinrich Hoffmann, Strubbelpeter, or shock-headed Peter, is somewhat different than your average counseling book you can buy at the store down the road. In roughly half a dozen small, comic-like illustrations, Hoffman's work tells of the false behavior of various children and their swift and drastic punishments. But why should I be talking about the reason or the intent of this piece of work when I can just let the author do it himself? At around Christmas of 1844, when my eldest son was three years of age, I went into town to buy the same a storybook fitting for a small human of that age. But what did I find? Long stories or ridiculous collections of pictures, stories on morality and beginning and ending with admonishing instructions such as a good child. So fuck all of that PC pre Biedermeyer bullshit. And let's take a look at Hoffman's magnum opus. This is Strubbelpeter. Now, in this review, I'm not that much for a linear approach. However, I do still think that the best place to begin is at the beginning. Oh, and do be aware that for the purposes of this review, the text that I will be reading will be the original German texts with the English translation on screen. The first page is essentially a small poem priming us and setting the tone for the upcoming stories. The poem reads, Wenn die Kinder artig sind, kommt zu ihnen das Christkind. Wenn sie ihre Suppe essen und das Brot auch nicht vergessen, wenn sie ohne Lärm zu machen, still sind bei den sieben Sachen, beim Spaziergehen auf den Gassen von Mama sich führen lassen, bringt es ihnen Guts genug und ein schönes Bilderbuch. Now, for brevity's sake, we're not going to take a look at every story in this book. Instead, I've selected three stories that are without a doubt not only the most popular, but also the most batshit insane stories that Strubbelpeter has to offer. So, the first story that we are going to take a look at is entitled The Dreadful Story of Harriet and the Matches or, as I would like to dub it, A Song of Cats and Fire. Paulinchen war allein zu Haus, die Eltern waren beide aus. Als sie nun durchs Zimmer sprang, mit leichtem Mut und sing und sang, da sah sie plötzlich vor sich stehen, ein Feuerzeug, nett anzusehen. Ei, sprach sie, ei, wie schön und fein, das muss ein trefflich Spielzeug sein. Ich zünde mir ein Hölzchen an, Bis auf die Mutter hat getan. Of course, the two cats tell her to not do this because mama's forbidden it. But of course, being the disobedient little shit that this girl is, she does it anyway. And thus the story concludes with. Verbrannt ist alles ganz und gar, das arme Kind mit Haut und Haar, ein Häuflein Asche bleibt allein, Und beide Schuhe so hübsch und fein. You hear that, kids? Don't ever, ever play with matches. Or else, you're gonna be burned down to a fucking crisp. Our second story is entitled The Inky Boys. And believe me when I tell you this is not a story about some guys 
trolling people with parchment and quill. Es ging spazierend vor dem Tor, ein Kohlpechraben schwarzer Moor. Die Sonne schien ihm aufs Gehirn, da nahm er seinen Sonnenschirm. Da kam der Ludwig hergerannt und trug sein Fähnchen in der Hand. Der Kaspar kam mit schnellem Schritt und brachte seine Brezel mit. Und auch der Wilhelm war nicht steif und brachte seinen runden Reif. Die schrien und lachten alle drei, als dort das Morchen ging vorbei, weil es so schwarz wie Tinte sei. It's about a bunch of racists. And may I remind you, this book was written at about the same time that 12 years a slave takes place. In fact, one of the reasons why the North won the Civil War was because of a lot of German immigrants in the US, most of whom had just escaped serfdom, decided to fight for the North because upon their arrival to the US, They quickly became aware that the whole idea of freedom and opportunity wasn't true for a large portion of its people. And these people were usually identified by their skin color. Naturally, this abhorrent display of racism doesn't sit very well with St. Nicholas, or Agrippa as he's called in the English version, and he has some choice words to say too, And about them. Da kam der große Nikolas mit seinem großen Tintenfass. Da sprach, ihr Kinder hört mir zu und lasst den Mohren hübsch in Ruhe. Was kann denn dieser Mohr dafür, dass er so weiß nicht ist wie ihr? Die Buben aber folgten nicht und lachten ihm ins Angesicht und lachten ärger als zuvor über den armen schwarzen Mohr. And how does he punish these obnoxious pieces of shit? Well, let's skip a bit forward to the final poem. Du siehst sie hier, wie schwarz sie sind, viel schwärzer als das Mohrenkind. Der Moor voraus im Sonnenschein, die Tintenbuben hintendrein. Und hätten sie nicht so gelacht, hätte Niklas sie nicht schwarz gemacht. Oh, and please notice how it's not so that Their skin is black now, but their clothes are still normal colored. No, they've been turned into fucking shadows, possibly doomed to follow that black kid around for the end of eternity. And if that isn't a way to teach kids to not be fucking racists, I don't know what is. The last story we're going to take a look at is called Little Suckathumb. And believe me when I tell you, this is the story that is the most fucked up and also the story that has the most striking imagery of this book. But before I get ahead of myself, again, let's just start from the beginning and take a look at the first poem. Konrad, sprach die Frau Mama, ich geh raus und du bleibst da. Sei hübsch, ordentlich und fromm, bis nach Haus ich wiederkomm. Und vor allem, Konrad, hör, lutsche nicht am Daumen mehr. Denn der Schneider mit der Scher kommt sonst ganz geschwind daher und die Daumen schneidet er ab, als ob Papier es wär. Fort geht nun die Mutter und, wupp, den Daumen in den Mund. So, after everything we've just looked at, do you think this is just a story that parents tell their kids to try to wean them off a bad habit? Nope, he's real. If you don't cut out bad habits like sucking thumbs or biting nails, a giant tailor or craftsman will come and cut your thumbs, fingers, or toes off with a giant pair of garden shears. As I said, this is by far the most insane but striking imagery of the entire book. And it really does ask the question whether these kinds of methods are indeed helpful in some way. But before we address that, let's just take a look at the last two verses 
of this story. Bautz, da geht die Türe auf und herein im schnellen Lauf springt der Schneider in die Stub zu dem Daumenlutscherbub. Weh, jetzt geht es klipp und klapp mit der Scher die Daumen ab, mit der großen scharfen Scher. Hei, da schreit der Konrad sehr. Als die Mutter kommt nach Haus, sieht der Konrad traurig aus. Ohne Daumen steht er dort. Die sind alle beide fort. So, with the imagery you've just seen, this raises the question whether these kinds of methods of teaching children don't really go too far, or do they do they go too far? And in my opinion, no, no, it doesn't. It does the job very admirably. And even though the imagery is striking and the imagery is memorable and at times there don't be cruel to animals. Don't play with matches. Always eat your soup. Look where you're going. Don't be a fucking racist. And incidentally, keep up a tidy appearance. Well, that's it for this episode. Stay tuned when I review another famous children's kids book and brace yourself for the next movie review.